So I'm going to load in the black and really tiny little A's we're going to do. So I have black on my finger. Perfect. Painting is messy. All right. So we're going to go like little tiny A's. And what that does, it makes that little blueberry thing on the top of blueberries. You know what I'm talking about. You know that little star type thing on the top of blueberries. I'll show you when I get these done up close. What a cool little detail that is to really making them look like real blueberries. So kind of like an A, that's kind of the best way to describe it. Like an A with an extra line across it or a star, five point star. All right, so I got all those cleaning my brush and I'm just gonna come in a little closer so you can see that. Hopefully it's focusing, it looks like it's focusing. And there's just these little A's on the tips of my berries and it kind of makes them look like Real blueberries. So that's about as realistic as I get. <laughs> All right, so really we're done. Um, the last thing we're gonna do is put these little dip dots around the centers of our daisy. So I really wanna make sure we're done because once you put those on, um, you don't wanna stick your hand in it. But the only other thing you could do is any final little swirly do's that you wanna put around. Um, but like I said, don't get carried away because then you're just filling in all the blank space and it kind of looks, see, I like that. Like it needed one there. And I think it might need one. Oh, definitely over here. There's nothing swirly. I should probably put another leaf or something, but like a little swirly helps. I could put a swirly back here. All my swirlies go in the same direction. <laughs> You'll kind of start to see what I'm talking about. You have to really force your hand to go a different way if you want to um, make them in different directions. It's funny. So I'll go this way this time. But these script liners are amazing. Like you really have good control. If you want control, you just slow down and make a swirly in it. It works for you. So that's basically it. I really don't want to do too much more. I think I'll put a swirly here. And that's it, just to kind of carry the flow around. All right, that looks pretty good. You know what, you always want to sign your name too, so I'm just going to take this real quick while I have it and go S-A-R-A, -A, and I put a 14. And you can figure out what you're going to write on yours, put your initials, put whatever your secret signature thing is, but I've always just put my name. I used to write my whole entire name. Um, but you should really always sign your work and date. And it's funny because when I go to craft shows, like these all have an 07 on them. So if I were to bring these to a craft show, people would be like, damn, seven years old. But I wouldn't sell these. These have been on my walls. i got to put them back on my walls. But all right, so this is the very last thing. I'm going to use a stylus. And on my other one, I used this big honker. Actually, the first one I did because this is what I've been using for my clay. And these are huge little dots that I put around there. But the next one, I went downstairs and I got my little one. This doesn't have a size, but um, you're going to get out. Well, we have the maple sugar and the burnt sienna out already. And then we're just going to need custard, I think. No, white. White. Um, custard is the buttermilk. No, we're just going to use white. We're good. Um, actually, I think I am going to use buttermilk instead of maple sugar because the maple sugar is what we based it with. So it's going to be burnt sienna, buttermilk, and white. And we're going to put dip dots around the centers of these. And you're going to stick with the dark color mostly on the bottom. I only um, put the dark color on the bottom. And um, then I put the, all, I put the custard, oh, it's not custard. That's what she wants me to use, custard. Um, the custard, buttermilk, all the way around. And if these are too big for you, make them smaller. Actually, I'm such a heavy hand. Everything's big when I do it. I have a hard time making anything small, so. 
That's why I'm so proud of my um, applique clay pieces because they're actually coming out pretty good, nice and small. All right, so then we're gonna clean that little dip dot off and go into the buttermilk. <laughs> and I'm gonna put these all the way around. So the top all the way around the bottom too. And they should be small. So if you have a smaller, I should probably be using the smaller end of my stylus. I think I will on the next two. I'm gonna switch ends. And, cause they still come out, the first couple ones always come out biggest. And then as you keep popping them down there, they get smaller and smaller. Um, and it's just for texture, it's just for some interest. Um, you don't even have to do it because our centers, our centers looked really nice. Or I should say my centers looked really nice. And then for the white, I'm just going to put that on the highlighted side. So just the top. Just a few here and there to kind of highlight the top. And that is going to be it. So I hope you learned something. I'm going to go see what I have here in a minute. And if it's terrible, I won't even upload it. Um, but I really enjoy this piece. It's, it's really quick and easy. And you come away with something that actually looks halfway decent. I'm liking this one because I didn't put any fancy edging on like it. And I did put welcome down the middle of the first one too. Like you could make a space and make put a word up top or you know, design your own arrangement. Um, I just kind of was going off of those um, light switch covers that I had for years. So that's what I came up with. So there it is. I'm going to put it in front of me, kind of give you a look at it. And hold it up. So you can see what I mean. Those shadow petals are behind the the white, and it kind of just gives it depth. I don't know, it's a shadow. Um, and again, you could add more leaves or little tiny leaves in the green. Maybe I should have a few more, I don't know. But I think I'm gonna leave this one just the way it is. I really, I want you to see the, um, the way the, uh, the ends of those berries is so cute. All right, I like it. It turned out good, you guys. And hopefully you'll try it. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I'm back real quick because I wanted to talk about varnishing um, and also cleaning your brushes because in order to maintain them, you need them to stay clean. Um, people are terrible. Like you can, these water buckets are what acrylic painters use a lot. Look at my water, it's disgusting. But you just leave your brushes in the water. People are brutal. And so, um, and like, look at my bucket. It's just covered in paint and ugly, but I'm really not good about keeping that clean. Um, the other thing is there are polymers in paint and they've always suggested that you do not put them down the sink and the, in your, like we have septic and well water at my house. And so I always just dump my bucket outside. I don't know. I'm dumping it into the ground, but um, at least it's not going directly into your pipes because the polymers will clog your pipes. Um, so I've heard. So I've just always not done that. Um, then there are um, brush cleaners on the market, little soaps. There's one called Pink Soap. It's just called Pink Soap. It's in a little tube squirty outy thing. And I have that. It's downstairs somewhere. Um, and I like to have that. And I would just squirt that out. And because when I go to seminar or when you're at a class or something, oh, my light is flickering. I'm going to fix that. Sorry, we have those bulbs in this chandelier that are like, I don't know, those newfangled kind and they flicker sometimes, but. Okay, so pink soap, but all, I don't have it right here with me, but if you're at a class or something, it's good to have it, and then at the end of the class, you would just put that on your brushes, and it kind of conditions them too, but at least your bristles won't stick together, and then when you get home, you can clean them better. But I'm just gonna use, um, you know, palm olive. It's not palm olive, but whatever brand I get of dish soup, and this one especially. I'm gonna let this one sit, because this is really stiff. There's a lot of paint stuck down in here. The top of the bristles is fine, and it worked just fine. But like, 
it should be, you know, flexible. It shouldn't be stiff like that. So I'm gonna just let that soak with some soap on it and try to get it clean because that's my smallest one. So I'm gonna clean my brushes and set them aside so that they're good to go the next time I use them. Um, Cause these were so good. All right, now varnishing. Um, I varnished this one with the satin and I have both of these now. I have the satin and the, they're both Delta. They're different, um, Delta ceramic coat, different labeling, but they're both interior varnish, one satin, one matte, um, durable protective finish. And I like this brand and um, for this one, I'm gonna do the matte finish. This one is the satin, so you can kind of see the difference. Um, and all I'm going to do, I mean, you would squirt this out on your palette and get a brush. Oh, this is my varnishing brush. Usually, you could just have one brush to varnish with, but I've used this for years, and it's kind of gotten really soft. You kind of want to use a soft brush to varnish with. And this is a mess. Like, you wouldn't really want to use it for anything else, but uh, to varnish, it's fine. So I'm just going to put a little right on the piece and um, brush that on. Just cover the piece. Did I use a mat? Yeah. And um, just one, you can put as many actually coats as you want. Two coats would probably be really good to do, but um, I'm really lazy, so sometimes I'll just do nice one nice coat that covers. And you might get bubbles, so just do it gently. Um, and your brush strokes will probably uh, go away. And you could do the back too. So that's it. It takes about like 10 minutes to dry. So you would just set it down and uh, let it dry. So that's about it. But now I'm, I'm just gonna take this and stick it right in my water bucket just so that it has water because all these products are water based. So luckily, you know, the water will start to break it down and then when I just, I'm gonna take that over to the sink and just clean all my brushes in a minute. All right, so I just wanted to add that in there too. Um, so we did a little bit of everything. We did um, prepping the piece, which I talked about this all purpose sealer any type of sealer, and you can even actually take varnish, and I used to prep my pieces with that. Take the varnish and the black paint one-to-one. -one. So a little puddle of black, little part puddle of varnish, and you could base coat your first initial coat with that to seal your wood as well. So that might be, um, I don't really know the differences actually in what is in the varnish compared to what is in the sealer. Um, you could also use the gesso, like I said, and give that a good sanding after your first coat. I just add the black to it so that that already gets onto the piece. So you only have to do one coat of like straight black after to base coat. And your piece is pretty much covered after that. And it gets a nice um, and fine sanding after that too to get the, um, cause the paint brings the nap of the wood up. But like, look how smooth that is. So a fine sanding after your final coat and then you're gonna have a really smooth nice surface to paint on um, so that's the prep then you paint your piece and then when everything's dry give it a nice coat or two of some type of an interior varnish whatever you prefer all right you guys so I hope to do a couple more painting um, tutorials I'm gonna have to figure out what um, type of pieces I want to put in my store and um, maybe we'll do those together all right thanks for watching